Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl here, back with another episode, and we are going back to school, we're going back to budget. I've got my U of T shirt on because today's episode is all around student tech essentials, and I've kept it more on the budget side. I know 2020 is kind of being weird. Some people are going back to school. You might just be learning online. Money is definitely a bit tougher to come by. So this episode is all around the tech that you guys might need, but it's keeping things very, very budget friendly. Let's get started with the first item, which is... The Zion Smooth XS Gimbal. The thing that's cool about this guy is look how compact this is. Let me just grab an OG gimbal just to show you guys. A clear size difference, and this one is the typical gimbal that we see. The Zion Smooth XS keeps everything nice and compact. It has this really interesting telescopic handle, which you can still increase the size. So this guy is now technically larger. So depending on the length that you're looking for, of course, you can choose what size that is. It does come with a nice little tripod edition, which you can use to stand upright. So setup of this gimbal is actually super simple. I've got it paired to the app and I am rocking my Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. It takes some of the best video, but what I found is the stabilization on it just needs a touch of help. So you can see right now I'm recording. You can see what I kind of look like on screen there that helps me out. We've got cartoon behind the camera and this footage should be generally super stable as I come in and out here. So it has the typical joystick which you can kind of use to control the gimbal, kind of change the access of the device. When you do a double press on that button it should theoretically now switch to portrait. That's super dope. It does work with other devices, of course. So say I've got my iPhone connected and once I start video, it has some pretty cool features built into the app. So it has this gesture control slash motion tracking. The gimbal is actually moving on its own, kind of tracking me. So that's object recognition. You know, it's kind of following me. So that's definitely kind of cool. I think that's such an awesome feature. And obviously when you use this outdoors, you've got more space, it's a bit easier, but you can see even in a tight setting like this in my studio, it still works. Dope and cheap. Budget item number two, and I know that a lot of us might not have a dedicated gaming console, of course, a dedicated gaming PC. Mobile gaming is just becoming huge lately. Smartphones have becoming more powerful. A lot more people are just playing games on their device. This is a controller that you can hook up to, I guess, any phone. I've been using this a ton with my Note 20 Ultra. It came as the pre-order package, but you can still get this as a standalone. It's the MOGA controller. It's dope because you can connect your phone either via Bluetooth or with a wire. I've been playing actually a ton of Call of Duty Mobile, some Fortnite. I did manage to download that before it was blocked from both the iOS App Store and the Google Store. It'll be interesting to see how Epic Games takes the situation. I'm sure they'll find their way back onto the App Store, but it's this whole tech debacle. I know that everyone's kind of watching it right now. I'm curious what you guys have to think. It's a bit too big of a chunk that they could give up, and I know that mobile gaming is the big thing right now. So. We'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, the MOGA controller, highly recommended. Speaking of devices, I know the Note 20 Ultra is way too expensive. I think it's around that $1,400 mark. That isn't on budget. These two phones, however, are. We have the iPhone SE and of course the Google Pixel 4a. I made an entire separate video comparing both of these devices, but I think this comes down to, are you an iOS user? Of course, that's on an iPhone. I still think the display is a bit too small and I'd honestly go for the 4A. You get stock Android, you still have a great camera experience. Seeing smartphones under the $500 price range, I think is super dope. We also had the OnePlus Nord, but it isn't really available to most people in North America. So that could be a possible third contender if you do have access to it. And if you already own a smartphone or any other device and you wanna change things up a bit, there is no better way on budget to change it than using a dbrand skin. They've got their new pastel colorway. I, of course, had to get mine in the pastel orange. They've got literally skins for every single device, phone you can think of. For under 10 bucks, it's a great way to change up the look of your phone. The next two items coming in on budget are both from Blue Microphones. We've got the Snowball Ice and the Yeti Nano. And for those people that are spending more time at home and are taking, say, classes online, you'll definitely need to interact with both your classmates, your professors, your teachers, whoever that may be. So audio quality is super important and you don't wanna sound like you're being recorded on a potato. The Snowball Ice is the cheapest of the options. It's made of plastic, the build quality isn't as good, but the sound quality is actually on par with the Yeti and even the Blue Yeti Pro, which I actually use to stream on Twitch. 
They do provide studio grade audio quality. So if your laptop or even desktop aren't really up to match that, definitely look into investing into one of these. These are under that $100 price range. And I think a lot of you will be looking towards getting an audio device because we'll be spending way more time online and behind the computer rather than talking to people face to face, which is kind of sad, but the reality these days. Next on the list, we're switching to a pair of headphones. And I know that wireless earbuds are all the rage. Of course, they have been for the past couple of years. OnePlus has introduced their OnePlus Buds that come in around that $50 mark. And when you compare that to say AirPod Pros, Google Pixel Buds are even the atrocious looking Microsoft Surface headphones. The OnePlus Buds have some really great value. So they come in a ton of different colorways. This was their signature blue. The sound quality is actually very similar to the OG AirPods or the second version AirPods, not the Pro ones. These don't have active noise canceling. I would 100% recommend these over say the OG AirPods. I don't think they look as sleek, but if you can get over that, which I think most people can, such a solid buy. And I know a lot of people that have bought OnePlus Buds have been super happy with them. The second last item on the list, I'm just gonna add it because they're off in my set. It has to be a set of notebooks. If anyone actually still uses them, I'm still a hardcore notebook user. I love to jot down notes, ideas for say these YouTube videos. I know that when I was a student, I still love to use them. There's something so satisfying about using an actual pen on paper. I seem to retain information a lot better. These are for Moleskin. I've got, of course, Harry Potter, huge fan. And this one is a Super Mario. Nintendo cartridge. The last item though, I will include, I just saw this guy off to the side. When you are studying alone at home, when you are by yourself, this is a piece of tech as he can sit on your computer, he can sit beside it. I've got my little dude Charmander. I've also got a Bulbasaur back home. Not necessarily really tech, but I decided to include it in as it is a budget option. But yeah, that was my student tech essential list budget edition. And you don't technically need to be a student to have any of these items. I think they're great pieces of tech for anyone that's watching this episode. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. And remember you can win any of the items that you saw. Just leave that comment down below. Follow me over on Instagram and I will catch the rest of you in one of my next vids or vlogs. Peace.